Hey everybody, it's Sunday night, and today I finished up the metal storage rack you see on the, the right there. And right in the center, you probably see a big empty space right next to one of my tool chests. And that's the space where, show you guys this, the, where this bad boy is gonna go. So my task for the next few evenings is to get this mill off of this crate and onto its base, which is right there, and eventually somehow get it all over there. So I figured this would be interesting for people to follow along because all I have is a, your typical two-ton Harbor Freight engine hoist, and that's about it. So I uh, hope you guys follow along. I hope you enjoy it as well. Okay, guys, as you can see, I got the base off. How I did that was, well, I basically, this base isn't that heavy. It's maybe, I'm gonna guess like somewhere between like 225 and 300 pounds, maybe 250, 260, which is enough that I can maneuver it. So basically what I did was I just kind of turned it maybe 30 degrees here and slid it over to the edge. And then I just came over with the engine hoist, which was able to reach over the edge far enough when it's out at the half ton setting that I could just hook this, this um, rope that I have this is 750 pound breaking strength nylon rope. And basically it's just, well, get it off the air hose here. It's just a big loop, ignore all the untidy ends over here, but it's just a big loop. And all I did was loop it over this side, We'll find out here in a minute. 
Okay, it's down. Um, it was fairly easy. It was a lot easier than I thought it'd be, actually. It did stay nice and level. The weight's definitely down below. Down below the hinge point, for sure. It's not very top heavy. Yeah, very top heavy. The only thing I would tell you is it probably means, I don't know, somewhere between 5 and 10 degrees forward, but that's, I think it's to be expected with all the weight that's on this side of it. Um, if I had probably actually hooked it up underneath the head itself, it probably actually would have been pretty close to level, but I didn't really want to do that. I didn't want to put that much stress on the bolts and stuff that are holding it. I just, so I put it back here right literally on the, the flange, so. But it worked really well. I'm happy with it. So uh, I think I'm not doing anything else this evening. I think tomorrow I'll go and get a 2x4. Because right now I don't have, I only have one and it's now cut down enough that I couldn't cut it in half and put two pieces across so I could support it on the engine on the hoist itself. But right now it's just sitting on a piece of plywood on the floor. And then tomorrow I'll uh, move it and I'll see about <laughs> getting rid of this. Not quite sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Okay, so it's Tuesday now. I've got this taken care of. Well, I'm say I got to take care of. I actually didn't need to go get another 2x4. This one was long enough. So as you can see here, I've got it sitting on the actual, you know, on the actual base of the lift, which is, I thought it was taught the proper way to move it. Maybe because you don't want this weight up here. If you're trying to move this thing forward, it's going to shake, possibly side to side. And this, this lift isn't really designed to handle out of my face. The lift isn't really designed to handle a lot of side to side motion. You might tip it over, you might actually break a weld or something on it. So what you want to do is you want to get it as close as possible. Right up to where you're going to put it. Um, I do have a furniture belt. I'm going to lift this up and see how high it can go. If I can just get it straight up and I actually have enough space underneath it, what I might do is lift this up, or I guess move it off of here, come back and lift up the base and put it on the furniture belly, which can handle more than handle that weight. Um, then come back and put this back up and lift it up, and then roll the furniture belly with the base underneath, underneath everything, and then get just close enough that I can get the bolts down close and tight, and then lift it up as well, and then basically pull the furniture belly out from underneath, and then lift this all up, get it up here on the um, 2 by 4s and then I can roll the whole thing into place. I haven't decided yet, I have to see. I want to see how high this will go. Um, because I am a little here, I might wait. I might be able to do it by myself. Um, with the furniture doll, like that will work, I can definitely do it by myself. Because then essentially all I'm doing is lifting it straight up, sliding something in, lowering it, pulling it fast, and then lifting it back up again, and then sitting it back down on the base so it's nice and stable. I can roll it over and sit it down on the floor. But I did with, with the base where it's at now, I come out cranking this up two feet off the ground with no help, and then trying to move it forward, and I have to see how I feel about that. So, let me work on this, I'll think about it, and I'll come back when I, when I got it done. So guys, I got it in place. What I decided on doing was I just lifted the mill up, and then just carefully I tied it off to the actual hoist itself, so it couldn't move around and shake a whole, whole lot, and then just push it forward, slowly, really slowly, sat it down on the base. I had to move the base a little bit just to get to where it was at, but it's now in place. I can, I've already checked it. I have full range of motion in the X and the Y, and I've got enough space behind that if I want to, I might have to move some stuff, but I can open up the back here and get into the power box so I can sneak back around like this and there's enough space back here that I can pose out of the way that I can reach around in here and look and reset something if I need to or change something if I need to. I've got everything hooked up and wired and um, trimmed in and aligned as good enough as I think it needs to be for right now anyway. Uh, the new lift head motor came in the mail today so I wired that in other than that little gremlin problem that was probably my fault or just stupidity on my part. It all works now, so the head goes down, that goes up, and I don't have to crank it, which is lovely. Um, power key double up. Works good in both directions. Um, I said, I tightened up all of the, the gives. 
but I think I might still want them a little bit tighter. I have to see how to play it a little bit and see how it does when it breaks in. Um, I definitely, I've got the steel for the base, that's my next project. I'll probably actually use the mill to make it. Um, because it does rock a little bit, mainly because the base probably is not perfectly flat, and I can guarantee the garage score is not perfectly flat. So at certain speeds with the cross, with the, with the power feed, you'll hear like a resonance, and it's really just the, I think it's just the base vibrating a little bit and making noise. Um, but essentially it's done and in place, other than the base, which will take another couple days. But it's ready to use. So that's pretty much how you move one of these. This is my first time moving one. I've seen um, pictures and talk to people, but it seemed a lot more downy than it actually was, but it still makes you nervous when you've got that much weight hanging up in the air, especially when you've got that much money tied up in it. I can't imagine some of these guys that do race motors and have you know, $20,000 in an engine, you know, four feet off the ground, just hoping nothing goes wrong. Um, that's it. Uh, maybe I'll make a little video and show you guys how I'm going to make the base as well.